We all want people to listen to us when we speak, but this is really difficult when we're giving a talk, presentation, or sharing something on the internet. The problem isn't that people are rude, easily distracted, or overwhelmed. The problem is we're bad at communicating. Most of us are good at communicating in small groups with our friends and family. But the moment we're on, the moment we feel the spotlight on us, we forget all the rules of communication. Probably because they're all unwritten rules that no one actually teaches us. I know this firsthand. Back in the 1990s, I was destroyed in my first speech and debate competition. I hid behind my notes, spit out a bunch of facts, and didn't say anything that really mattered to the people in the room. I came in last place in my event, but I kept at it. Through years of speech and debate, teaching, storytelling, I've learned a lot about how to speak so others will listen. Here are my top 10 tips. Know your audience. The first thing I do when I prepare a talk is ask myself, who is my audience, why are they here, and what do they value? If you can't answer these questions, you run the risk of giving a talk that no one will care about. But when you use examples that make sense to the audience, when you dress and talk the way they dress and talk, you open them up to hearing you out. Highlighting shared values, things that you and the audience both care about above all else, it's the key to winning people over to your point of view. Talk to someone who knows your audience and then build a message that resonates with your audience's perspective. Lead with awesome. People take seconds to decide whether or not to pay attention to you. Instead of a slow buildup, begin with a powerful question, your most interesting idea, or a striking image. Here's a good example from this channel. Everyone loves brownies, but if I took these delicious brownies and made them look like this, would you still eat them? Tell a story. Before videos, PowerPoints, and blogs, humans shared stories. Stories take complex information and make it easy to understand. If you're thinking, I'm not a good storyteller, that's a lie. You're a great storyteller. You do it all the time with your friends and family. You just forget to do it or try too hard when you're talking publicly. Start your talk with a personal story related to your overall message and tie back to it at the end. If you can't think of a story to tell, use these prompts. Want some story inspiration? Go see a live moth event, listen to the Story Collider podcast, and read TED Talks. Make it emotional. We like to think that we're logical beings who think like scientists looking for truth. But the main job of our thoughts is to defend what we're feeling. We don't have an internal scientist. We have a lawyer who creates arguments that protect an emotional client. If your talk isn't making someone feel something, it isn't going to do much to change their thinking either. Psychologist Jonathan Haidt describes it like this. A dog's tail wags to communicate. You can't make a dog happy by forcibly wagging its tail. And you can't change people's minds by utterly refuting their arguments. Emotions activate people, get them thinking, and make content viral. If you can find a way to get your audience to feel what you're saying, then you have a chance at getting them to think about it too. Bridge new information with old information. If you're presenting on something, you probably know a lot about it. But I might not know anything about this topic. You have to help me learn this new information by bridging it with something I already know. I'll let astrophysicist Neil deGrasse Tyson explain. It is the pop culture scaffold mm -hmm. on which I clad the science that we unravel. You don't have to teach them the pop culture. They already right. know who Beyonce is. They know what football is. They know who the Kardashians are. If they come in with that and we analyze that scaffold and say, here's science that can fit this section and that section and the other section, you walk away not with so much an enhanced appreciation of science, but an enhanced appreciation of the pop culture stuff you already Already cared about mm -hmm. and you realize that science infuses everywhere. When I'm teaching someone about cognitive dissonance, I tell them that their mind fights off dangerous ideas the same way the immune system fights off viruses. That's a lot more effective than talking about how the mind strives for consistency between beliefs and actions. Use everyday language. Stop using big words. I know you 
think they make you sound smarter, but they don't. Psychologist Daniel Oppenheimer studied this and discovered that simple writing sounds smarter than complicated writing. High school and college students often use more complicated language than they need to, but the biggest offenders are scientists and professionals. They often rely on complicated jargon. Jargon is great when you're communicating with colleagues, but it alienates audiences who are outside of your profession. To paraphrase Einstein, if you can't explain it without jargon, you don't really know it well enough. Run your talk, script, or article through a readability tool and check its grade level. Most best-selling authors all write at an elementary or middle school grade level. The simpler you write, the larger your audience will be. Only use text when you have to. People can read faster than you can talk. If you're reading from a PowerPoint, the audience has already beat you to the end of the slide. Instead of text, fill your presentation with emotional images. You should only use text when it adds value to what you're saying or emphasizes an important point. Stephen Colbert's The Word is a great example of this. Every text extends on the meaning of everything he's already said. To learn more about this, pick up a copy of Presentation Zen by Gar Reynolds. Engage your audience. Here's a secret teachers never tell you. Lectures aren't that effective. They're good for clarifying information and presenting new information, but what's much more helpful is active learning, collaborative learning, techniques that get people to think and do on their own. Give your audience a way to experience your content. Stop your talk and ask them to think about a question, then share their response to the person next to them, and then after that, get everyone to share aloud to the whole group. Ask your community to help you decide what type of content they want to see next. Start a conversation at the end of your video. Be real. People often tell me, what I want to say has already been done. I don't care what's already been said, written, or filmed. It's never been said in your voice, from your perspective, with your story. Don't try to be what you think people want you to be. That person already exists. Be yourself, because everything is much more interesting when you're honestly being yourself. Build value. People have a really good BS radar. We can easily figure out if someone is trying to promote themselves, their organization, or their profession. If your audience smells BS, they're gonna tune you out. Give people something valuable. A new perspective, a helpful tip, connection to resources. If you're able to do this consistently, you'll never have to promote yourself. People will start coming to you because you've already given them so much. What are your favorite presentation, public speaking, and storytelling tips? Let me know in the comments below.